the Fables of Knitting. My name is Helena and I am the designer and now dyer behind Fabed Knitwear. It's been a minute since last time, uh, tons of stuff's been happening. I'm back and I'm gonna talk to you about my newest collection, which is the Demoiselle collection. Two of the patterns have already been published, maybe even all of them by the time I managed to post this. There will be three, or there are three patterns in total. As I've covered before with this video, so when talking about my designs, I really love and enjoy designing in collections. Um, and like the purpose of the collection will vary from collection to collection. And this time around, I wanted to make a collection that you could wear as a cohesive outfit so to speak and also with garments that you could wear on their own so there's a blouse a dress and a cardigan uh, and you can layer them or you can not <laughs> layer them or layer them with something else so there's loads of outfit options for these designs um i was thinking during summer that i would do kind of a lookbook of here are all the different ways you can style these, just for inspiration. If anyone would be interested, I think that would be really fun, a really fun thing to do. I think we should just jump straight in and then I'll talk more about my life in general towards the end. Uh, knitting content first and foremost. Let's just begin. Uh, begin with what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Eglantine dress, uh, which is French for Briar Rose. Uh, the Demoiselle collection, as perhaps the name hints at, is named and inspired by France. Uh, when I was a kid, we spent a few summers in France driving. We drove all the way down from Norway uh, and then we'd rent beautiful farmhouse and we'd live up in the country and there would be sheep and sunflowers and antique markets and gorgeous tiny like hamlets so gorgeous and i've only been to paris as an adult but i would love to go back and perhaps my memories are very romanticized but they are this is the eglantine dress it's knit bottom up I'm going to do it with the can, can dancing here, which is also French. <laughs> uh, you can't really tell with this dark one, perhaps. It has a lace hem. So it has an A line flared skirt, a fitted bodice, and then thinner straps, and it's quite low at the back, low, like just below the shoulder blades. It's knit, as I said, bottom up in the round. It's a surprisingly quick knit, um, even though it's a dress and it has some flair to the skirt. It's knit on four millimeter needles uh, and the recommended wool or the recommended yarn is Pickles Merino Tweed or Pickles Pure Wool. This is knit in Pickles Merino Tweed. Um, full disclaimer, I collaborate with Pickles when designing so I get a free pick of their yarns for my design work if I'm knitting private things. I buy it, uh, but this is for design work, so I have received the yarn for this. And then if they should wish, they get to sell yarn kits with the pattern included from my patterns, which they do for, I think, 12 of my patterns. Just makes it easier for some of you guys if you, you can just go in and select colours and you'll get the pattern and everything in one go. So that just full on disclaimer for that. This is all pickles yarn. Uh, which I love, it's where I shop anyway, <laughs> if I shop yarn from like elsewhere, that's my go-to place and it always has been. So I, yeah, I love this yarn. I've talked about the Marina Tweed before, which is my favourite. It's very light and airy uh, and the speckles of the tweed are gorgeous and they vary from colourway to colourway. I love tweed yarn, will have the same speckles and then you dye on top of it. This, uh, the speckles vary from base to, uh, from colourway to colourway. Yes, so this is the Eglantine dress. I also knit it up in Marina, in, sorry, I also knit it up in 
up your wall. So you can see the difference. Like I think they knit up read it quite differently. This is pure wool. Pure wool is a bit less rustic, it knits up very evenly and it's also a tad warmer. The merino tweed is area than the pure wool. This has a bit more structure to it. This is the colourway Grand Almonds. Oh, I'll write it in. As you can see, it has a seed stitch hem and seed stitch straps. And then the back is slightly lower than the front. And you can see the lace a lot better on this as it's not so dark. So this runs all the way along the hem and it gives you a bit of, you have to think at the beginning of the project and then it's all mindless for there, from there. So in my experience and also some of my test knitters said that once you reach the stockinette, the stockinette kind of felt like a reward, <laughs> which is always good uh, because it can be uh, boring in some, if, if you crave a more advanced project so the lace gives you that in the beginning and then super easy reward time after that the when i chose the colors for this i wanted colors that i have this image in my head of a, f uh, a french chalet or a farmhouse and there's an apple there's a tree and there's like a swing and it's an old like stone cottage. I have no idea if I've seen this or if I've seen in a picture. <laughs> but I, wouldn't, I wanted colours that I could just fit into that picture in my head. So when I looked at colours, I would compare it. I would try to like put that in my mental picture of well, what I had in my head. And so very earth tony neutrals is what I went for. And I like the... Um, I hope you can see that they knit up slightly, slightly differently, but they're still very... I love them in both. I don't have a preference for this, actually. Usually I do. I genuinely don't. I think they both serve a purpose. And I love the speckles in this, and I love this colour. I think this is a very, very flattering light colour. A lot of people are scared of like very light and pale neutrals. If it's warm enough, you shouldn't be because it's not going to turn you... A lot of people are scared of going like, make me look dull and grey. This definitely won't because it has a very warm undertone. So don't be scared of it. So what else should I say about this? The pattern, as all my patterns, it's available in English and Norwegian. It ranges from sizes extra small up to a, a 3XL. The bust circumference up to 137 cm, I think. I don't know what the best in inches. Uh, you can knit it in any fingering weight yarn, really. Probably sport weight as well. If you wanted a really nice, light, airy summer dress, fingering would probably be best and it drapes beautifully. Is there anything else I need to say? So this is the Eglantine dress. It's available at Etsy and it's available on Ravelry. If you make my things and you're on Ravelry, I, please make... Oh, please. <laughs> I would be very happy if you would make a project page and add it there because I love seeing your versions. Obviously, you know, I'm not very active on Ravelry, which I should be. Uh, but if you are, I still go in and I see what people are making. So there you go. My wish to you, if you choose to make any of my patterns, really. Um, the first pattern that I published in this collection was the Paisan blouse. I wore it for the like mini, mini, mini episode last time where I talked about... Uh, just a quick, this is what's coming into the shop video. Uh, and I 
in case you haven't seen it or in case you didn't thought about this it's oh, i'll show you it has This is it. This is the Paisan blouse. It's knit from the top down, which is the first pattern I've made, which is top down. I know a lot of people prefer it. It has an elastic neckline, so you can wear it on the shoulder or off the shoulder. It has a two by two rib neckline, and then you knit it, and then you pearl around, and then you knit two centimeters again, and then you tack it down or knit it down to create a cable for the elastic and then you separate for the arms and the body and then you just knit on down. This has increases in it which creates a very nice bishop or poet sleeve which is very nice and blousing. At least in this yarn it blouses beautifully. This is also knit in pickles merino tweed uh, in the colourway nature. And then this is slightly longer than cropped, and then you uh, rib the hem again, just for two centimeters. It's not meant to be super form-fitting. Uh, it's quite a loose garment. The Paisan blouse was inspired by your historical peasant blouse, or which, or just basically a chemise. Uh, chemises were historically worn under your overgarments. Uh, if you look at films or images, paintings, you can usually see like, the hem of undergarments, which is just a blousing, large thing. And it's been worn for centuries. Uh, they usually had drawstrings at the neckline and then you tie them. Um, this, I swapped the drawstring for elastic. Usually quite billowy, formless uh, garments. and. Just so timeless, and you can wear it with a skirt. Today, you can wear it with jeans, you can wear it under a dress. Endless possibilities. So, that's the inspiration for the Paisan blouse. Paisan is French for peasant and peasant blouse. So, that's the name of it. It's very, very easy in it super for beginners or if you're just looking for something relatively mindless to just perfect for social knitting i should say and i feel like the color combinations you can make such different garments depending on what color you choose so this is very rustic and romantic because of this image i had in my hand when picking colors what i wanted it to fit in um but if you knit it in like a more sparkly yarn you can knit it in a more like elegant color and you'd have a completely different garment so i have so many wishes for this as in wishes i have so many there's so many variations of this that i want to do i've worn it a lot i also knit one up again because i wanted to show both Color, uh, both yarn options, so you can make your informed choice. Also, knit this in pure wool, in white. I don't know how well you can see it with this pure wool uh, merino tweed drapes a bit more, but this is warmer again, so they serve different purposes. I've worn this, this has been my go to layering blouse for when it's chilly outside because the weather's been a bit all over the place really so this is pure wool the you decrease at the wrist and then you make another cable however i've chosen not to put elastic in in the instructions to tell you how you can do it but you don't need to if you want to just fit it tightly obviously you just thread in some elastic using a um, safety pin I chose not to because I like I like how they kind of hang off the wrist, each to their own. But that, there are instructions for that. And again, you can see how it's not like super form fitting, and I think that's very beautiful with the high waisted skirt or just over some shorts. I'm very, I love it. I've worn these a lot. It's 
quite humid today, so I opted not to layer with it. I was planning on it, then it's just too warm, so I... But this is, you can pretend this is the Paisan blouse, unless I'm layering them. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> So that's the Eglantine dress and the Paisan blouse. Next up, and the last pattern of this collection, which I'll be publishing on Thursday. Thursday the... I can't remember... 20th something. So this is the Abaya cardigan. It has a honeycomb pattern that runs all the way across the body and then the sleeves are knit in 2 by 2 rib that you fold at the cuff. Uh, and then has a v-neck, as you can see, Ooh. and a belt. You can tie it at the back or you can uh, cinch it at the waist for more form, uh, for more shaping, I should say. Uh, it has no body shaping, so it's meant to be slightly boxy, not boxy boxy, but it's not your typical me style figure forming cardigan. It has no shaping because I wanted the belt to do that if you so wished. I wanted a cardigan that you could throw over and it could be super casual or you could dress it up, which I think this is because of its lack of the body shaping. There is, I'll show you the honeycomb pattern. And then the sh uh, sleeves are off the shoulder, so the seam should go like right across oh, there, really. And then you pick up stitches for the sleeves and you knit out. Drop shoulder, is that what it's called in English? If it is, that's what I mean. <laughs> and then you also pick up stitches across here and then knit a two by two rib all the way across. Then these are knit on in seed stitch and the belt is also knit in seed stitch. I really do love this cardigan. I want it in all the colours. I really want a brown one and I really want a green one. This is how it fits. This is knit in pickles merino tweed, which is the recommended yarn for it. There you go. I love it. And as you can probably, it's meant to be slightly boxy and shapeless. And then you, because then when you do this, obviously look in the mirror, it gives it a bit more shape. It has a 2 by 2 rib at the hem as well, which I completely forgot to show, which I should have done when I wasn't wearing it. I'll stand up for you. And then... Let's do this. Obviously I would have buttoned it if I was doing this. This is it! This is the Abaye cardigan in, again, pickles, merino tweed. You can see the speckles in this are gorgeous. They're a warm cream and like a warm honey yellow on top of the mustard. Oh, I love it. I really do. It's, the pattern is quite easy and it becomes like you get the hang of it after you've done like a report or two and it's just smooth sailing from there. You knit it up to the armholes and then you separate two front section and a back panel and then you knit them back and forth. The whole thing is knit back and forth. Um, but then you also knit them back and forth and then you start shaping for the neckline. There's no shaping for the sleeves, seeing as it's a drop shoulder that you pick up. And then you seam it at the top, make sure not to do it too tightly. And then you pick up, as I said, for the bottom band. <laughs> wow. Yes. This is 
set the buttons. Perfect match. They are fabric buttons with braids in the exact same colour as the cardigan. So that was great. They are from Bergen. We've talked about that button shop every episode I, I have made. So yes. What else? I, I knew I wanted to design a cardigan for the collection, but I also knew I wanted something that was slightly different from the typical cardigans I've done before. And it started off with a certain, with this slightly different silhouette, and then the idea kind of developed, it grew, which I completely allow them to do. Sometimes I'll do a sketch and I'll have an idea and it'll turn out exactly like that. And sometimes it changes quite a lot and like whatever needs to happen, I'll let it happen. Uh, and this was one of those. It developed as I was thinking more about it and as I was knitting up the other two. This was the third one that I was working on. And yeah, it's so happy with it. I wanted to make a tip, like a very traditional silhouette. It's not a very Norwegian, traditional Norwegian silhouette because we have the kofta which has its own vibe going. But I have, get like kind of a, like an, like, I don't know, just like a cottage farmhouse feel from the silhouette. And I really, really enjoy it. Oh, I'm pulling that. <laughs> It really is a very human today. Um, so, savvy. Not gonna wear it. Even though I love it. Maybe I'll wear it to work. But yes. This is the idea of it. And yeah, as I said, the silhouette is slightly different from the other ones that I've done. But still, I feel totally fits in. And layers beautifully. That was also a thing with me wanting it to be slightly larger because I was working in a collection that I wanted you to be able to layer over other things or over around it, depending on which garment. Uh, I needed something that wasn't too form fitting because you wouldn't be able to layer then, would you? Uh, when knitting this, when you're blocking, because two by two rib or any rib will, I don't know what it's called in English. It will cinch in because of the ribbing. It will anyway. You you know what I mean. Uh, so when you block it, just make sure you sort of stretch out the ribbing so that you can actually see the differences in the knits and pearl stitches. So it's not like a cinched in sleeve. So that's something to do when blocking. I do say this in the pattern, but just heads up anyway. And also, if you're knitting with a very elastic yarn, Marina Sweet is not very elastic, so it will stay this way. But some yarns are very elastic, and so the honeycomb pattern will probably look more like a diamond pattern when you're knitting it. Uh, and what I mean by that is more like this, and less like this. So more like this. So what you do when you block it, just gently stretch it out a bit to make sure it gets the right honeycomb shape and also that it doesn't end up being too form-fitting because if your yarn is elastic and you knit in a varying knit and pearl stitches it will cinch in. So just something to be aware of. There is nothing wrong with this turning into more of a diamond shape and being more form-fitting but just, just so you know you can make it alter it by stretching it when you block. So this is the Abbey cardigan. And that was it, that was, those were all the three Demoiselle collection patterns. I've been working on this collection for pretty much all of 2019 so far and I'm very very happy with the outcome. I love all three patterns, I wear the wear the finished garments that I have knit from these patterns all the time and I'm just very happy with 
what the work has produced. I hope maybe you find something that you want to knit, maybe you want to knit one of them, maybe all, maybe you just, you just want to admire from a distance, which is also of course fine. Uh, you can have a look on the hashtags on Instagram if you want to see uh, some of what my test knitters have done, what the people that have already started knitting, what the colours they're choosing and how they look in them. It's always great to see what other people look like and the colours they choose. We're also different and what I choose and how I wear something might not resonate with you. You might not be able to relate to that. So have a look at the hashtags and if you choose to knit and post, I would love it if you use the hashtags because I also really love seeing what you do and feel so inspired uh, by your colour choices and how you style everything. Please do that. Everything is available on Etsy and ooh, Etsy and Ravelry. Uh, the patterns they're in both Norwegian and English. The English version is below the Norwegian version in the PDF. Just so you know. You can of course use any yarn you choose. I've chosen uh, I have pickles as the recommended yarn. Marina Tweed and Pure Wool because I love them and they're not very expensive, uh, will fit a lot of wallets in that sense, but you can choose anything you want as long as the gauge is right. I say like fingering or a light sport is probably your best choice and also they drape beautifully those weights. I, yeah, I'm very excited to show you. I'm very excited to have this done. I have already started uh, for some new ideas, for upcoming patterns. Of course, no idle hands in this house, except my boyfriend, so 50% idle hands in this house uh, when it comes to crafting and having something to do at all times. But yeah, that was the Marcel collection. Let's talk about something else for a bit. Since uh, the last proper episode, I have had another shop update uh, with the basis Athena and Galus. There's like three, I think, skeins left of Athena, not much at all. Although there are two skeins of Dreamseeker Dandelion, which is enough for a cardigan, up to a size medium, maybe even a large, uh, depending on you know what size cardigan and what shape cardigan. But uh, my patterns, that should be fine. I'll say like. Maybe a Delacorte cardigan, beautiful than that. And there are a couple of skeins left on each of the three colours of Gaelius Tweed. So there's King's Foil, Kaluna, and Goldthorn. I am definitely planning a Rowena jumper and an Earthcracker jumper in that base. And I've also been to Italy with my parents and my sister. We went to Bergamo in the north of Italy, uh, just outside of Milan. So beautiful. We happened to go on the weekend where all of Europe had constant rain, so it was raining all the time, but who cares? It was still gorgeous. So beautiful. I would definitely recommend going. We ate all the good food, we saw all the pretty things. It was it was the first trip I'd been with but we've been on with my parents and my sister probably since I was 17 or 18 when we went to Rome. Another Italy trip, so that was really nice. It's been a long time. Because I don't count when they came to visit me in London because I lived there. So for them it was a trip, but for me it wasn't. If you count that, it's not been that many years. Um, but I count that, so it's been ages and eons. So that happened, really nice. If you're contemplating going to Bergamo, it's really beautiful. There's the lower city and then the upper city is all it's really old and gorgeous and there's hardly any cars and it's all just cobbled streets and rickety alleyways. It's really beautiful. Very recommended. And I bought do I have it here? Let me see. I can't find them. Uh, I, as I showed, if you saw my Christmas episode last year, I collect, um, what was I going to say? I collect Christmas ornaments, Christmas tree ornaments from when I travel. So each place I go, I buy a Christmas ornaments. And I 
table, it's a little wooden Pinocchio to go on the tree. I thought it was in the bookshelf. It wasn't. <laughs> he's hiding somewhere. Escape attempts, perhaps. Um, <laughs> so he's not here. I bought one of those, so I was going to show you because a lot of people ask, but what can you do? If he's hiding, he's hiding. I don't have time to play hide and seek right now. I've also been had a designer interview in Bright Garn, which is a beautiful magazine. This is Summer on the cover. Gorgeous. So Damn. and So many gorgeous patterns in this. It's really nice. And here I am. So I'm not man. If you can read Norwegian, pick up a cover. Not just to read about me, because I talk about myself all the time. But to support the magazine and to have a look at the beautiful patterns in there. So many gorgeous patterns. It's a really lovely magazine this is number nine and as in yeah this is the ninth publication that they do i was also just had recently had an interview in ukebrayama which is a weekly magazine with a slightly older target group than myself there's a lot of knitting patterns and baking and antiques and they did a story about my fair vintage Collection. So check that out as well. I'm going to buy a pack of pie ball. Oh, I'm going to buy a copy today. That's what I was trying to say there. Huh? Uh, so, celebrity, you guys. Totally. 17th of May was last Friday. If you're not Norwegian, the 17th is our uh, Constitution Day. We celebrate our freedom from the Danish Union. Norway was. Never really its own country, only for very short periods of time through history. And, and on the 17th we celebrate our independence. It's our one annual occasion to wear the Bunard, if you have one. I have one. I was lucky enough to get one when I was a teenager for my confirmation. I have the Nordmarsh Bunard. They differ from region to region, so mine will be different from someone who's from elsewhere. Uh, picture in because it's so beautiful. I wish I could wear it all the time but then again I guess the novelty is I don't get to wear it all the time. So you have to polish all your silver and it takes ages to get into but and I've not had anything done with it since I was 14 and it's starting to feel that way. It's kind of like wearing a corset uh, so I'm probably gonna have to let it out a bit for next year if I can be asked. I love it. I think mine is the prettiest. Don't tell anyone I said that. Everyone thinks that's about the wrong brunard. <laughs> it's fine. So that was on the 17th. Such a fun day. You start the day with breakfast. We invited all our friends for breakfast. We had a champagne breakfast. Everyone brought a dish and that was just so much food. And then we went out in the sun, walked down the river, and then we booked a table in one of the uh, the back the backyards of a pub and we were there for a couple of hours in the sunshine drinking beer and then we have a friend who invited us all over for a barbecue uh, on the rooftop terrace out by the harbour it was just best day ever the 17th is always such fun can't wait for next year love it i hope everyone who did celebrate had a lovely time and if you didn't celebrate if you're not from Norway and you want to go to Norway you should come for the 17th because I think it's an experience even just like an aesthetic experience because of all the full costumes all the boonas and just the general joy of the day it's a very joy just everyone everyone's smiling so come for the 17th if you if you want to come experience Norway at its finest um, and obviously everyone's welcome on the 17th.
where whatever finery you have and come celebrate. Apart from that, what else has I been, have I been doing? We finished, we watched the last episode of Game of Thrones yesterday. I'm not gonna, no spoilers, I'm gonna try. But if you're very scared of spoilers, maybe you just don't watch, or maybe <laughs> this is goodbye for you. Uh, I don't see why everyone is so surprised at the outcome. I feel like I knew this was gonna happen seasons and seasons ago. I liked it, I thought it was a brilliant season. It was a bit rushed, maybe they should have, if it was maybe a 10 episode season, they, we, they could have paced it better. Um, I'm a lot of the time when uh, you don't get as many episodes as you previously have, it's usually because of uh, actors' availability and contracts expiring. Um, I say this because I've worked on film <laughs> and TV. Um, so I'm guessing that's why they didn't have as many episodes as previously, uh, just because of availability and contracts. Uh, it would have been even better if they had more episodes to pace it and build a bit more. I liked it. If the only reason you didn't like it is because Daenerys was your favourite. It's so to be you, I guess, but it's no surprise. <laughs> so that's my opinion on it. I thought it was a very well made season. Like, technically, brilliant episode three with the battle. Just like, technically, cinema the cinematography and the editing and the score. Oh my goodness. Masterpiece. So well made. So there's that. I've also, this is a while back now, I've read a series called The Bear and the Nightingale. Well, that's the first book, Winter Night Trilogy, I think. Such a good series. Three books, highly recommended if you like fantasy. I loved it. It was set in like medieval Russia, I think 14th century, 15th century. I can't really remember. Russia, and there's folklore, and there's, oh my goodness, it's, it's completely its own thing. It doesn't, didn't read like any other fantasy series I'd read. So there's that, and on more yarn related, knitting related subjects, I am currently working on dyeing up for the next update. The next update will have a bonnie, not bonnie DK, which is from the first update. This is the fingering weight version, which will just be called bonnie, which is a blue faced Lester. Uh, I'll have some, I have some new. Uh, colorways for it. I'm super excited. I finished dyeing it up yesterday, so it's all drying. And then I have another base to dye up and then I'll do the update. The next base will be a DK weight, but it's not one I've had previously. It's a organic merino, so non-super wash. I know people, I know a lot of people want that. So I decided to swap out Willow DK for this new DK merino, which is non-super wash. Uh, and I'm just planning colours and then I'll start dyeing as soon as I have time. So that's happening as well. Apart from that, not much to tell. I have to go to work. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, and work related as well. Uh, in case you're interested, I run the vintage shop, Fabi Vintage. I started the online shop two years ago and I've had a physical shop for nearly a year and a half now. But I'm losing like my lease ends and the rent's doubling, which is ridiculous. So I will no longer be able to stay in that location. So June will be the last month there and then I'll do the online shop until I figure out what to do. Or I'm, I'm not rushing it. I don't want just any shop front. I want it to be the good shop front and I need to be able to afford it. So that's what's happening there. So June will be the last month. So this is like the final uh, this will be the final few weeks until I go come out back to just online. In the meantime, by no means the end, just until I figure out what the next step is. So, a lot going on. I also have a product coming soon, which I'm so excited to show you. I'm just waiting for it, and I'm not going to tell you anything else, but I think you're going to love it. I hope you're going to love it, because I do. Uh, yeah, I think I've blathered on for long enough. I'm gonna drink my tea, I'm gonna get my bike and go to work, and 
I hope you liked the Demoiselle collection. I really do. I'm very happy with it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!